Hello and welcome to Vital Signs. I'm Brendan Fallon. Some of you out there, especially our older viewers, you may be dealing with osteoporosis or related bone health issues. So today's interview, you're going to not want to miss. It's with New York rheumatologist, Dr. Mohit Shukla. A rheumatologist, of course, being a specialist who diagnoses and treats diseases of the soft tissue, the connective tissue, and the joints like osteoporosis and rheumatoid arthritis. Apart from being an expert in his field, Dr. Shukla strikes me as a caring human being wanting to get accurate and practical information out to you. So he's going to be answering some of your pressing questions like, how do you know if you have osteoporosis? They say it's a silent disease because it's not easy to detect. We look at the medications, how they work, what's the cost, what are the side effects you should know about, and alternative treatments including exercises and even foods that can help. And you might be surprised by some of the foods that can help. This is Vital Science, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Shukla has decades of experience practicing medicine. He was recognized on the Best Doctors of America database for 2020. Currently, he's a rheumatology specialist in Flushing, New York. Dr. Shukla, thank you so much for joining me on Vital Science today. Thank you for having me, Brendan. And I'm really excited and, and keen to get your insights on bone health and uh, dealing with osteoporosis. And I'm sure many of my viewers will be as well. To start with the obvious question, what is osteoporosis? So osteoporosis, it's defined as a bone disease where your bone mass and bone strength decrease over time and which leads to increased fractures. So to understand this disease better, I would discuss the bone physiology first. So the bone is a living tissue where there is a constant process of bone building by cells called osteoblasts. And there is a remodeling of the bone where the old bone is taken out by the cells called osteoclasts. So there is a balance between this bone physiology and in early stages, for example, childhood puberty, you bone cells are working faster and they're making building up the bone more than the remodeling that's happening. So by age of 30 years, you build most of your bone, what we call peak bone mass. So after that, the bone building decreases. So in osteoporosis, what happens is the osteoclast or the remodeling of bone occurs faster than the bone building. So that leads to decreased bone mass, what we call decreased bone mineral density, and that leads to easy fractures. What are the main signs that come through? What are the symptoms right. that someone might have osteoporosis? So interestingly, osteoporosis is a silent disease. There is no symptoms of osteoporosis. It's only the testing we do, we confirm with the testing that there is osteoporosis. However, patients, the, this disease only becomes symptomatic is when patients have fractures. For example, a patient coming in, in the clinic with a new onset back pain, there's a high suspicion that patient, an older female or older male, may have a new osteoporotic fracture. So you have to keep that in mind. A patient who has hunched back, has decreased height, may have a silent fractures in their spine, and they may have osteoporosis. These are the few clinical symptoms which we look for in patients who may not have a diagnosis of osteoporosis. And um, if you have a patient who's coming in with a clinical history of hip pain, hip fracture, which, was, which occurred only with minor stress, for example, lifting something that's not too heavy, or coughing, fracturing your ribs, which is very minor stress, which should raise high suspicion that there is there could be a potential osteoporosis medical problem in this case. This case. I, th I think you've, you've touched on this a little bit. What are the main methods that are used to diagnose uh, osteoporosis? So osteoporosis is diagnosed with a bone density test called the DEXA test or bone mineral density test. It's a form of a x-ray and it's done every two years to monitor if patients have osteoporosis. What age should someone start having that, that kind of testing done? So the screening recommendations from various societies recommend females who are 65 years and older to have bone density tests who do not have any 
risk factors for osteoporosis. A postmenopausal female who's 50 years and above with risk factors for osteoporosis, such as family history of osteoporosis, certain medications they are taking for that can increase the risk of osteoporosis, or they have medical conditions that does predispose them for early osteoporosis should do the bone density at 50 years and above. There's no proper guidelines on, on screening of men, but we generally look at the medical history. If a male who's on certain medications or hormonal problems such as low testosterone, some risk factors of um, osteoporosis, we screen males as well. Dr. Shukla, what are the risk factors that someone might develop uh, osteoporosis? So I define the risk factors in two broad categories. The first category I want to talk about is a non-modifiable risk factor, such, which is basically you can't change that risk factor. So this include age, it includes gender, such as female um, or male. So a female carries a higher risk of osteoporosis a family history, and race, and body mass index, such as um, how thin you are, how, or your uh, bone structure, how, how, how's your height. So talking more about these things, so age. So as I discussed previously, postmenopausal females, such as 50 years and above, where most of the females or females that are attaining their menopause, after menopause, the risk of osteoporosis increases significantly. It is basically the estrogen, the female hormone, that decreases with menopause, that rapidly reduces the bone strength, bone mass, and females fall into this high risk of osteoporosis. If you have family history, that also produces higher risk. Even family history of hip fracture, that, that also should raise concerns um, that you should go and have screening for osteoporosis. Now, if your body mass index, if you're slender, if you're petite, you have less bone strength, less bone mass. So you are at increased risk of osteoporosis. Now, the big factor race. So Asians and Caucasians are at higher risk of osteoporosis as compared to African Americans or Hispanics. What are the modifiable risk factors? So I talk about lifestyle. So smoking is a big risk factor that increases your risk of osteoporosis. Alcohol consumption increases your risk of osteoporosis. Sedentary lifestyle, if you are not moving and not exercising, that increases risk of um, osteoporosis, risk of hip fracture in the future. And then there are medical problems, so such as some gastrointestinal diseases, such as celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. So these conditions where you are not absorbing calcium, vitamin D, those nutrients, hormonal problems such as endocrine problems, including higher thyroid conditions where you produce higher thyroid hormones and that can increase risk of fractures by increased cell turnover in the bones. Low estrogen conditions such as menopause in certain medical problems, patients uh, do not get their menstrual periods, they have lack of estrogen and low testosterone problems in males can increase risk of osteoporosis. And there are medications, some medications that are given for patients with different medical problems, such as glucocorticoids or steroids, which I treat patients with certain autoimmune diseases. Steroids are also given for asthma. So these can, uh, medications can increase risk of osteoporosis and so forth.